Cornish pasties. Well, I'm doing the Cornish style pasty and um, I'm going to get the fill in to a pretty authentic recipe. And uh, in order to do that, a, a, a Cornish pasty is a meal in a pastry pouch, effectively. Um, and the pasty shape has lent its shape to it's travelled all over the world wherever the British have been and uh, it's over 500 years old so it, uh, it's been used in Cornwall for over 500 years it, it started its life um, as something that a shepherd could take with him um, all day to feed himself he could stick it in his pocket and it would keep him warm and it would still be warm enough to eat at lunchtime and then it would sustain him through the rest of the day. It later gained some um, fame uh, as being used by the Cornish tin miners uh, although they weren't the first to use the pasty. The pasty is a very very old uh, recipe um, and over the years it's, it's changed but it's kind of stabilised now with these ingredients and I'll go through them. It, it has potatoes onions and what they call in uh, Cornwall turnip which is actually a swede or a rutabaga and the beef used is skirt beef now the reason we use skirt is because skirt as it cooks it creates a gravy it, it, it actually creates its own gravy all right um, for the for the um, Cornish pastry pastry case uh, we'll need some lard, we'll need some butter and we'll need s about 500 grams of flour, roughly 300, three cups of flour um, uh, and we start to make a short pastry but I'll go through that in a minute. So I'm going to clear the decks and make the pastry first because I like to sit that for about half an hour before I use it. Alright I've got about um, 50 grams of butter which has been chilled and cut into small cubes and just to further annoy the food police I've got uh, 125 grams of lard again which is chilled and cut up so I'm going to introduce all that plus my 500 grams of flour to my food processor and let that do all the work and what we do is we grind it until we get something close um, oh, I forgot the salt. One second. Let me put a squeeze of salt into that. That'll do. And and then what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll run that through the food processor uh, until we get a fine bread crumb. Okay, I've run it in the food processor till I've got something resembling very fine bread crumbs. And then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce a little bit of water into it and stir it around until it starts to form a dough. Not more. You know how to do this. Um, there's no set amount of water to use. It depends on how dry your flour is. Um, how long it's been in the bag, how long it's been on the shelf, there's too many um, there's too many factors really to but just keep working it with a little bit of water until it starts to clump. Alright now once you've got to this stage you can form it into a dough. Now um, what we do is we keep rolling it until the bowl's clean to form our dough. And the resemblance with short crust pa pastry ends there because unlike short crust pastry, the Cornish pasty was designed um, to be tough. In fact, I think there was an old saying that says you could throw it down a mine shaft and it wouldn't break or something ridiculous like that. But anyway, that's probably just an old wives' tale. But um, so what you do now is you can work that for about two minutes into a dough. So you've started off like a short crust pastry, 
but now we're working it for about two minutes into a dough. You don't have to go too crazy with it, but only for around about two minutes. I'll get back to you in a minute when that's done. Right, that's it uh, needed for two minutes, and now all I need to do is I want to put that in some plastic wrap and stick it in my fridge uh, for about half an hour while I get the, all the, the meat and vegetables prepared. All right, so I'll just wrap that in some cling film now and put it away. Right, we just need to uh, now chop up our vegetables, turn them from that into that. And um, now um, I'm just going to transfer that to a bowl and cut the meat up. You'll notice I only used half of that, uh, half of that turnip, half of that swede. Um, so uh, I've got a roughly equal amounts of, of each of the vegetables. So we've got some um, potatoes, onions and swede. That's the genuine article, boys and girls. That's what you need to use. All right, I've got 300 grams of uh, beef skirt, and the advantage of beef skirt as well is that it's not very expensive. That pack, that cost me two pound 87 for 300 grams, so that's a pretty good, pretty good value. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that um, into against the grain, so you'll see the way the grain is going of the meat. And in this case, it's running that way. So we cut it against the grain. And we cut it into slivers. The way I like to do that is just to go like that. And very thin slivers. So you end up with that sort of slivers. Which are then cut again into little pieces. I don't want it like ground beef, I want it like that. So I'm just going to finish doing all this and then I'll get back to you. Okay, the reason we cut our uh, beef skirt up like that is, is so that it cooks evenly. Uh, and also the way it, uh, the beef skirt gives off a, a gravy of its own, uh, it, it will also give more surface area for that, to act, for that process to actually happen. So we end up with a nice gravy as well. I'm going to mix all that together now in my bowl and give it the good news with my hands and distribute that meat around. Some people stack it up separately, they stack the meat separately onto the pie but I tend to do it all, all as one action like that. And uh, the other thing we need to do is get some salt and pepper onto it. All right, uh, we've got our meat filling all mixed up and ready to go and seasoned. Now our pastry, which I take out of the wrap. And what I'll do is I'll cut that into half and each one of those into three. So I end up with six roughly even balls of dough and I'll roll those into balls and I'll keep the others chilled while I work on on each one separately so here we go all right All right, it's been a while since I've uh, made any my own dough, so bear with me, be kind. And flour your surface, flour your rolling pin, or whatever it is you're using. Put the dough down, and then we want to roll that out. Evenly. My sister will be laughing at this because she's a really excellent pastry chef and I'm rubbish. Right, um, and we roll it out. Don't be too thin with it. And then what we need to do is get a plate and place the plate around the edge 
and cut around to make it nice and even. The thing I left out the ingredients list of course is the egg wash. So you'll need an egg, a beaten egg for an egg wash. And then what we do, uh, give me a sec, I'm just going to get an egg wash. Okay, you can use uh, egg or milk for this, I prefer to use egg, it gives a bit sheen and um, I just beat that up. All right, get your filling and make sure you've got enough filling but not too much, that's the secret with these. And don't be too greedy with the meat in each one either. So get that in and move it over to one side of the pan. Alright, then your egg wash around the edge, like that. Lift it up and over to make the seal. And what we do is we drop it just inside, just inside like that. And you'll see why now. Because I push that down, seal in the pie, and then start to turn. So you start this end and you turn, you fold it in and on itself, in and on itself, in and on itself and push down, in and on, and you continue on round like that. Um, I haven't done this for a while, but uh, in Cornwall they do this at super lightning fast speed. And I'm sure the pastry chefs among you can do just as well. So there you are. And then we turn that last bit over and then tuck it on under itself like that. And this outer ridge is what was used by the Cornish tin miners to eat uh, their pasties um, without getting their uh, arsenic contaminated fingers. Uh, onto their food and they they just throw throw away the crust So I'll put that to one side uh, unlike a lot of pies uh, British pies um, I, I've never seen a Cornish uh, cook pasty cook uh, Put a vent hole in a pie um, So we'll see how that goes as we go along. I'll just put that to one side And then I'll finish them all off. I'll finish the rest of them off. Here we go again. There you go. Slide to one side, lift it up and over. Just inside the lip, push it down. And over, just inside the lip and push it down. Okay, then you start the fold. There we go, going around, lifting it up, pushing it in, lifting it up, pushing it in, and you work your way around. It's not an exact science, but it does look pretty if you do it right. And then we took that last one under and you end up with a pasty that looks like that. Okay, one alternative closing technique, which I'm going to show you now, is where you run it to the edge, completely like this. And those of you who've seen my other pie videos will probably know exactly what's coming right now. Um, you run it to the edge, like that. And then you go along it with a fork, crimping it down. You end up with a less doughy pie edge, pie join and pie crust when you do it this way. I personally think I prefer this because I don't like too much dough uh, myself. And I fold that last bit over and crimp that down as well. And then all I do is I go along it with either the knife or a pizza wheel and then just trim it up, make it look nice and professional. 
And that's it. That's the alternate method. There you go. Pretty, yeah. You're right, and that's got all the pasties made. Um, meanwhile, I've had my uh, cooker uh, heating up to 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. And I'm going to give these all a generous egg wash now and make sure you cover the whole pie with egg wash. That's important. We want it to look good. The finished pie has to look amazing. And we don't like any of those two-tone Essex tan pies. You know, we like our pies totally, utterly tanned. All been given the good old once over and plenty of egg wash on them and they're now ready to go into the oven. So there we have it. The uh, Cornish pasties are ready and I'll just cut one open so you can see it. Let me grab that and I'll just put the knife straight through it and then you can see it how nice that is. Gorgeous. Um, it, it isn't unknown for Cornish people to put a drizzle of cream in there to both cool it down and to make it even more excessive and fattening. Um, which is not a bad thing. And I just put that bit of information in just to annoy the food Gestapo that's out there. Anyway, there you go. Cornish pasties.